Welcome to Chris in the Garden. So we are going to talk about plumerias today. They're so easy <laughs> to grow here. I'll get into uh, the culture first of plumerias. Then we'll talk about fertilizing, the growing medium, uh, some pesticides, and my seven-month rule and my five-month rule for plumerias. And uh, there is a lot of work, huh? Well, the five-month rule is the easy one. That's you do nothing for five months. Oh. <laughs> So usually, uh, when it comes to uh, plumerias, what we do is we will get a cutting from a friend, or uh, we'll get a cutting ourselves, and cut it at a 45 degree angle like this. It'll bleed a little bit of what, what we call latex, or the white milky stuff. And if you see that milky stuff, that means that plumeria is really healthy. April 1st, what I call April Fools, to Halloween, that's my seven month rule. That's when we do everything with plumerias. But I cut them at 45 degree angles, I let them callus for about a week and then I will put them in a small pot just like the one gallon container here. There's a cutting in there and mm -hmm. at a 45 degree angle, the reason why that's better, I've doubled my surface area and that's critical for making the root. You can start from seeds. Um, on average, most people take, uh, well, just say two or three years before they even get some decent size, maybe even about that big oh, after wow. about three years. Okay. And to me, it's just easier to propagate. So the most important thing, 50% pumice, five zero, 50%. And the closer you are to the beach, I would say you could even bump that number up to 60%. And what I do with pumice is I will mix it with any potting soil. I don't think it matters what potting soil it is. This is the key, the pumice. And the pumice is there for drainage, for aeration. Um, it is volcanic and it's porous and it holds water temporarily. It holds nutrients, roots attached to it. I'm not a big perlite fan because it floats up to the top of my 50-50 mix and blows away and it breaks down and becomes uh, fines and I don't like that. The pumice is very, I'm going to say, pretty close to permanent. It could last many, many years. When I do plant plumerias, eventually I'll take it from a container that I propagated and in a few years it's getting big enough, I'll put it in the ground and I'll do the same thing for the plumerias in the ground. I'll mix my pumice and my native soil 50-50. I'll dig a big deep hole, uh, three or four feet deep, and I'll just take all that native soil and blend it with the pumice. And that's how I plant it. I do not put organic uh, material into that hole. I just plant the pumice into the 50-50 uh, pumice to native soil mix. Here in Orange County, uh, plumerias benefit from a full exposure from from sunrise to sunset. South exposures, west exposures, they work very well. The scent is just um, heavenly. Ranging from citrus to peach to coconut scent, uh, cinnamon, there's all sorts of uh, wonderful fragrances, even very floral. Gardenia, there's all types of scents. When we fertilize uh, plumerias, they're hungry, they're big feeders. And again, my seven month rule, April Fools to Halloween. We can water, we can fertilize, we can propagate. This is my favorite soluble for plumerias. This has kelp in it and you're going to see kelp by itself because it's, to me it's the best supplement for plumerias and they already supplemented the kelp in the sea grow by Growmore 42626. This makes 200 gallons and I recommend using it every two weeks at a rate of a tablespoon per gallon of water. And there's two ways you can do this. You can drench the roots and you can spray the uh, foliage. And if I was to spray the foliage, I would do it at nighttime. So if I coincide my fertilizer timing at nighttime to be sprayed underneath foliage, uh, those pores are open while the plant is exhaling oxygen, inhaling carbon dioxide, and the pores will accept the fertilizer that's soluble, that it's going in a liquid solution to go into the leaves. So 42626, uh, nitrogen will give you the growth, very low, plumerias grow enough as it is. The middle number, that's what most people are after. Um, the phosphorus is what promotes the blooms. The potassium gives you the branch strength to hold the weight of all the flowers that come later in, you know, usually June, July, August, September, when you get lots of flowers. Uh, here's another one that's a high phosphorus, which is popular. Growmore makes a 105210. You can use this as well at uh, nighttime under the leaves. You can also use it uh, as a soil drench to drench the roots, and you can use it bi-weekly. Flowers will usually start uh, opening up typically around May, and they'll go all the way into January, and usually it's so cold by then 
they finally drop the last of their flowers by the beginning of the new year. Here's another popular for, uh, formula, the Hawaiian Bud and Bloom. It's a 550-17, again pretty high in the phosphorus to push out the blooms and a decent amount of potassium. Worm castings will mitigate uh, whitefly problems and I will put about a quarter inch underneath my plumerias usually in April and I don't have white flies pretty much for the rest of the year. White flies are little pesky uh, tiny white flies literally and you'll see long white strings almost like Santa Claus's beard hanging down. Um, hibiscus is probably the most notorious for white flies. If a plumeria is a white fly hotel the hibiscus is a white fly convention center. Don't blend it into your soil problem with that is you can make your soil a little bit too wet. They really need to drain. They don't like to have wet feet. I think it's okay um, even if the soil's dry for several days. They can go long periods of uh, dryness because the plant acts like a succulent. Okay. So it holds and retains its own water. You know when it needs water when it starts to wilt. Um, and usually that's not the case very often with plumerias. Even if you go a few weeks without watering them in the summer. Uh, usually they they hold their water very well. Going with uh, kelp as a, another uh, nutrient, uh, you can combine kelp with any fertilizer program. In fact, I believe in kelp so much, uh, you could use it every time you water. You could actually water with kelp. That's how much I believe in it. Dilute an ounce per gallon. The benefit with uh, kelp, first of all, it's a marine algae that grows in the ocean. It can grow up to two feet a day in the ocean. So it is cold water process, and what makes kelp grow two feet a, a day is in the kelp. So that's gonna help plants. They're not gonna grow two feet a day, but they are going to receive the benefits. Kelp has about 70 trace elements. It's an organic suspension, so the plants will absorb it. I can spray this under the leaves at the same time I spray my other goodies. In the rare cases of fungus, uh, Monterey Complete Disease Control, this bacteria will control rust powdery mildew, black spot, root rot, all sorts of things. A teaspoon per gallon of water. You can spray it on surfaces. You can drench the roots. It actually is a beneficial uh, bacteria that no, not only works as a fungicide, but it actually colonizes root zones um, with beneficial bacteria strengthening the plant. Tree and shrub. The problem uh, I had was something called a Stevens leaf hopper. Uh, we had a problem with the leaves turning yellow. They became concave and parrot feet. There was hardly any flowers on them and the plants looked sickly yellow. So I stripped all mine clean. I put about three ounces of this in a five gallon bucket of water and I just started drenching. And not only did it come back, uh, probably in a month, all the leaves were green and normal again. It started flowering like it was supposed to and I didn't have uh, any leaf hoppers last summer. Something that's real easy to use on contact for white flies or any aphid or any uh, sucking little pest that gets on the leaves, even scale. Scale can get on leaves, even on branches and stems. It's like a hard shell or disc of, of, of an insect that's in its transition and its period of life because eventually that scale will eventually fly away. He'll start out as egg, they crawl, then they attach. Once they find a nice place to attach, then they grow the shell. So that's why we call them scale. And then they pupate into an adult and they fly away. But this oil will smother and kill them. Uh, this quart will make 25 gallons. Whenever you spray pesticides or you do um, any activity uh, with spraying on leaves of any plant for that matter, uh, do it in the morning, no wind, uh, below 80 degrees, it's always best. Are plumerias edible? Plumerias are not, they're very, in fact the white latex is somewhat, uh, we'll just say semi-toxic. Uh, most um, animals and most uh, insects don't like plumerias. So if you wore a lay of plumerias, would it kind of keep the bugs away from I, you? I would hope so. Ooh. I wouldn't have to wear <laughs> mosquito netting. Going back to propagating, rapid root is a hormone for you know, helping your cuttings uh, make roots quicker. So it's actually a, a what's called endol-3 butyric acid. And you dip your cuttings into the powder and pot them up. Are plumerias cold hardy? They won't like a high desert climate. And I've got customers growing them in Utah or in the mountains in the Sierra. They just have to bring them in. 
and they'll put them in a south facing window you can't uh, keep them outside they'll freeze they'll die it really is a tropical plant i wouldn't grow them indoors year round um, i think there's too many problems um, but one thing to strengthen them for the outdoors the last number again the potassium is, it needs to be a little bit high and the potassium will harden a plant before uh, Orange County winters uh, that'll help protect them against the frosts and the occasional freezes that we do get here but I always make sure I bump the potassium up at the end of the season like in October before I put them to bed. The five month rule uh, is November 1st to March 31st and sometimes it's my favorite five months because I'm no longer tediously taking care of my plumeras but rather if anything I'm picking up after them because they start to shed they're, they're gonna drop their leaves November December January February and they peak their dormantness or nakedness in March but during that five month period I do not water them I do not fertilize them I do nothing to them except pick up after them because they're always dropping um, so that's pretty much it with the five month rule I, I turn my back on them for five months all right, smile at the camera. <laughs>